Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 6.7, Solving Radical Equations. We're going to jump right into things where we're going to solve each equation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our goal right now is to get this square root by itself. See how the square root is attached to this minus 1? Well, we want to get the minus 1 away from that square root. And how would we do that? Well, we're going to add 1 to both sides of the equation to get rid of that. So now we'll have the square root of y minus 2 equals 6. Now, in order to get rid of the square root, what do we have to do? Well, we have to square that square root to cancel out that uh, square root. And what we do to one side, we have to do to both sides. So now, we will have y minus 2 equals, and then the square of 6 is 36. Now, let's just solve for y. We add the 2 over, so y equals 38. Done deal. But hold on a second. When we square stuff and when we square a square root, we have to make sure that we check our answers because sometimes we'll get some weird answers here. So let's go ahead and check our answer. So I'm going to plug this 38 back in for all my y. So there's only one y here. So it's going to be the square root of 38 minus 2 and then minus 1 is outside that square root equals 5 so now we have the square root of 36 minus 1, that equals 5. Square root of 36 is 6 minus 1. Does 6 minus 1 equals 5? Yes, it does, making y equals 38 our final solution. So y equals 38 works. Now with 2. And 2, we have the square root all by itself here. But look on this side where we have a square root over here as well. Well, when we square this side, how do we go about squaring this side? Ladies and gentlemen, with two terms over here and a variable over here, we put that in parentheses and square it all. So now it's going to look like the square of this is going to be x plus 15 because the square cancels out the square root. But when we rewrite this right side, it's going to be 2 plus the square root of x times 2 plus the square root of X. Now I'm going to multiply all this jargon out, and it's going to give us 4 plus 2 square root x plus 2 square root x, and then the square root of x times the square root of x just turns into plus x. Simplifying some more, it turns out to be 4 plus 4 square root x plus x. Now let's bring down the left side here, which is x plus 15. Now let's solve for x, and all I'm going to do is subtract the 4 here. I'm going to subtract the 4 from both sides, and I'm going to subtract this x over. So what happens, though, is that this cancels out. This turns into 11. This cancels out. This cancels out. So I'm left with 4 square root x. Now let's solve for x. Let's divide the 4 over, so 11 fourths equals the square root of x. How do I get rid of a square? I have to square both sides. So I square here and I square here. Ladies and gentlemen, be very careful though because when we square 11 fourths, it's going to be 121 over 16 and that's going to equal x. So now we have our answer but we have to check our answer. So I'm going to plug 121 over 16 in here and in here to check everything. So here we go. It's going to be the square root of 121 over 16 plus 15, and that's going to equal 2 plus the square root of 121 over 16. Here we come up with, punch it in our calculators, 4 and 3 fourths, and here we come up with 2 and 11 fourths. So does this equal each other? No, it does not. So since it does not equal each other, what was our answer is no longer our answer, making no solution for our answer. So why is that? What just happened? Well, we, we had a extraneous solution, and what that is, is the results are not solutions to the original equation. So the result that we came up with, which was right here, 
did not satisfy our original equation, so therefore it is an extraneous solution. So let's take a look at a couple more. Here with three, now we have a cube root. We have a cube right here. And how does that change the problem? Well, first things first, we still want to get the cube root all by itself. So what we have to do is subtract this 5 over to the other side. So we have the cube root of 3y plus 1, and that's going to equal negative 5. How do you undo a cube root? Well, it's the same thing as a square root, except it's cubed. So I'm going to cube both sides. So we go to the third on both sides. Now these and this cancels out. So we're left with 3y plus 1 on the left side. And now when we cube a negative 5, that's still going to be negative 125. Now we want to solve for y. Everybody knows how to solve for y. We're going to subtract the 1 over to get negative 126. We're going to divide by 3. So y equals a negative 42. Now we have to still check our answer. So we're going to plug in negative 42 in for our y. So we have the cube root of 3 times negative 42 plus 1 plus 5 equals 0. We keep going with this. The cube root of negative 126 plus 1 plus 5 equals 0. Now we come up with the cube root of one, negative 125 plus 5. Now, just because it's a negative underneath the cube root, that is fine. We can have a negative underneath a cube root. We can't have a negative underneath a square root. So the cube root of negative 125 turns into just a negative 5 plus 5. And so does negative 5 plus 5 equal 0? You bet it does. So since it equals 0, y equals negative 42 is a solution. And finally, with number 4. Now we have the 6 root of this right here. But notice how that 7 is attached through multiplication. Well, we want to get this root all by itself before we start hammering on anything. So how do we do that? First things first, it's treat it like just one big X. First, we add the 4 over. So it's going to be 7 times the 6 root of 5m plus 4. We're adding the 4 over, so it equals 14. Now we divide by 7 because it's attached through multiplication. So it's the 6 root of 5m plus 4. That equals 2 because we divided by 7. Now, sense of that 6 root, what do you think we have to take this? Uh, what power do we have to take this to? to the 6th power. So I'm going to take the 6th on both sides. On the left side, I'm going to have 5m plus 4, and 2 to the 6 is going to be 64. Solve for m. Subtract the 4 over. So 5m equals 60. Divide by 5. m equals 12. So now I have 12 for an answer. But does that answer work? What do we have to do? We have to plug it back in for m. So I'm going to plug it back in right there. Let's go. Here we go. 7 times the 6 root of 5 times 12 plus 4 minus 4 equals 10. Simplifying, we have 7 times the 6 root of, and this all turns into 64 minus 4 equals 10. The 6 root of 64 is 2, so it's 7 times 2 minus 4 equals 10. Well, it's 14 minus 4. Does 14 minus 4 equal 10? You guessed it. Yes, it does. 10 equals 10. So that works. So what is our answer? M equals 12 is our answer. And that does it for 6.7, solving radical equations. Good day.